In this video, we're going to talk about FPV on a budget. When I first started getting into FPV, probably, gosh, about three years ago now, I invested in fact shot equipment. And the reason for that was, back when we were first getting into FPV as a hobby, there were two distinct options. There was this option in front of us on the table, which was relatively expensive, but it made sure that you were guaranteed that all the parts of the system worked together or you could go and you could buy the discrete elements separately and then try and get them to work together yourself. And that included trying to figure out how you ran five volt and 12 volt cameras and transmitter systems together, whether the bands overlapped, whether the receiver could see the transmitter, whether the receiver could see the transmitter but also understand how the video signal was encoded. You didn't know if a boss cam transmitter would work with a fat sharp receiver or vice versa. It became very complicated. And because of that, I plunked for Fat Shark. So we're looking here at a pretty significant investment just in these little bits in front of us. It's a couple of hundred pounds in the goggles. There is probably 40, 50 quid in the transmitter, probably 20, 30 quid in the Pilot Fat Shark HD, and probably another 20 quid in the Fat Shark polarized circular antennas. The cost of entry for FPV was historically very high. And unless you had about 300 quid, the other option was to go and try and buy all the bits that were cheaper together, and then it was on you to make them work. As with all things in this hobby, time has moved on. So now we don't have to invest 300 pounds in order to get a system that's going to work. We can invest an awful lot less and get a great system. So what I want to talk about today isn't about Fat Shark. It's actually about these two things that I've got from Banggood. The first is a transmitter set. We'll talk about the bits and pieces in a minute because it doesn't come with a circular polarized antenna, but we'll get to that. And it has a 200 milliwatt transmitter that's 32 channel and also has a little 148 degree camera. And then here we have uh, an RC58 32 channel receiver. As you can see, it comes in a bubble pack, doesn't look particularly impressive, but the performance of these two things together is fantastic. Not only that, but if you actually pop this thing into a set of cheap goggles or into a little reversing car TFT that runs off 12 volts, you can have an FPV system for about 70 or 80 pounds. So what I'll do is I'll go through each of these pieces in turn and show you them working, not only with their own system together, but also showing the transmitter working with a fat shark and also this working with a fat shark transmitter to show you the true interoperability of this great little setup. So first of all, let me say a very big thank you to Banggood for sending me these things to play with. I've got the links in the bottom of the description. So if you want to have a look and order these, you absolutely can. But first of all, We'll zoom in and we'll have a look at the transmitter. So here we have the transmitter pieces laid out on the table in front of us. So in the actual box itself, um, you open it up and it's got all these little kind of gaps for everything. You get the manual, which is quite short and sweet. It just basically tells you how to plug it all together and how to change the frequency bands and channels. This is a full 32 channel transmitter. So hopefully you'll be able to find a frequency that matches your receiver. Now very kindly they've actually put out all of the channels and bands here in a little graph but I would point you towards a video that I did a while ago that talks about how the bands match up. If you want to watch that video there's a link in the description. I'll also put a link to the document where I actually map out all of the standard channels that things like Boscam, Flysight and Fat Shark and others use so you can see who uses what. So to put it together is really straightforward. All we have to do is take the cable that comes in the kit. Nice thing is it's actually got a balance connector at the end. So we don't have to do any soldering. We can just pop this onto the balance connector of a 3S flight battery and we're good. And the way it works is you plug this cable into the side of the transmitter. You then plug the cable that's free into the back of the camera. plug in the aerial and you're good to go. Now the only thing I would say about this that you have to be a little bit careful of is that the aerial and the way it comes it's actually not the same as the Fat Shark pieces. So the actual, let me see if it's going to zoom in on this, the connector is the connector, the SMA connector 
with the pin in it. Now, the way that most Fat Shark aerials work is most Fat Shark aerials have the same thing. They actually have the pin inside as well. That's just something you need to be aware of if you're going to change out this whip aerial, which I would I would absolutely recommend that you do because as we've seen in a couple of other videos, whip aerials give you absolutely terrible reception and for FPV, you need to be running these things. Now we'll come on to those in a sec. So this little setup here is very cheap and cheerful. Here's the link on the screen. And as you can see, it's very inexpensive for actually getting a nice little camera. To power it on is a piece of cake. You make sure that you have everything connected. You don't want, never want to power a transmitter without having the aerial on it. And then we just plug it in. And there we are, we're in business. And actually on the board itself, you can see, if I just cover it up, there we go, two LEDs. Now those LEDs are showing me the channel and also the band that's in use. So the band at the moment is F1, and F1 is the first of the Fat Shark channels. So to change it, it's dead easy. What you have to do is you just press the button on the side, try and keep it covered up, there we go, you can see it better, once to change the channel. So five, six, seven, eight, and back to one. Press and hold it to change the bands. That's gone to band A, band B, band C, sorry, band E, and back to band F1, which is where we're going to play with it for this demonstration. What I've done here, and I'm gonna put links in this as well, is you can buy cheap and cheerful circular polarized antennas. Now all the antennas I buy obviously are the kind that fits with Fat Shark because it has the pin in the middle. And what you can do to get these to fit onto this great little transmitter is you can buy a little right angle SMA adapter. Now I use these on a lot of other models anyway because it allows me to put the aerial straight up. But this one has a the, both ends do not have the pin in. So what I can do here is I can pop this onto the transmitter and then I can plug my Fat Shark aerial onto the top. And what I'll do, I'll actually put links in the description for both an aerial that will fit, that will give you a circular polarized aerial and also this right angle too. So there we have our transmitter. A Couple of other things that we're gonna talk about while we've got this on the bench. Some of you may remember we built a 250 class quad and we popped a camera in the front and I talked about the fact that some cameras would fit beautifully here and actually, if I can angle this so you can see it, there are kind of four holes at the front, that's better, four holes at the front that allow you to mount it. If you look at the camera that comes with the kit, this would fit beautifully in that slot. So if you were building this 250 class quad with me as part of the CC3D series and you're looking for FPV kit, this is a really nice option. And because the FPV transmitter is so small, you don't have the worry of having it extend a little bit out the back like I had to with the Fat Shark one. So let me just show you this working with some Fat Shark goggles. So here we are, we've got the transmitter set to F1. Here the, here's the view through my Fat Sharks. Apologies, it's a little bit tricky to see because of the very uh, wacky lenses that are in these goggles. Here's the view through some cheap goggles that don't have a receiver that I've popped the RC5832 channel receiver on the side of so we can see that as well. So as you can see, it actually works beautifully with both. So now we've looked at that, I think it's time that we look at the receiver. So the receiver comes in this little bubble pack and if you take it out, this is one I've been using. I've actually put it back in the pack so I can show you what comes in the pack. Um, you can tell it's the one I'm using because it's got all the uh, Velcro at the back. Um, you have a 32 channel receiver. Um, and it has a power button, a couple of AV outs at the bottom. We'll talk about those in a second and a little DC in. Uh, you have a Fat Shark style antenna at the top and it comes with a little whip aerial that you can pop on it for reception. Again, absolutely recommend that you're going to change that out to a circular polarized antenna for any serious FPV work. Other things that you get in the kit then are two cables. The first is a little AV cable that allows us to get the signals out the bottom 
and the way this cable is actually wired up, if we chase it through, I'm just going to put a diagram on the screen now to explain this. The, uh, the top or pin of the connector is actually the red channel, which is the right audio. The middle section then is the white audio and then the next two are the video out and then finally the ground out at the very back. So going back to this cable, what I actually did with this one, because I'm only using the video out, so I'm not using anything else, what I actually did was create a mini baby version which looks like this. And that then allows me to plug it into the little simple cheap goggles that I'm going to put this on in a second. And there are no more cables than we actually need. So if you follow the wiring diagrams, you can either do it this way or you can get yourself something like a three and a half millimeter four pole connector like this. And you can also get yourself something like an RCA jack from wherever and you can make up a little cable like this. But I've actually, all I did was I just cut off the two wires on this that I didn't need, making sure that I wasn't shorting out the middle connector with the shield. So that makes it very simple. The other cable that we get in the kit is a power cable. So we have an RST jack on one end and a little thin power cord at the other. And that again, just pops into the side. Now for the setup that I've done here, I've actually just made up a mini version of it with a Dean's connector on that just happens to work with the kit that I've got. So here we have a little receiver that will receive all 32 channels. Now to actually set this up and get it working is a piece of cake, but there is one thing you have to be careful of. So I'll plug it in and you'll notice that although we've plugged this in, there's nothing happening. There is a power button on here. So unlike most FPV equipment that automatically initializes, you do have to press the power button. So if we press and hold the power button, it'll turn on and it'll show us the band and the channel that we're using. And again, we're looking at, this calls it D1, but this is the fourth band in the series. This is the standard fat sharp band. Now we can either press the group and it goes band A, B, C and D and back to A. Or we can press the channel button and it will go through each of the eight channels in sequence and back down to one. So it's absolutely great at being able to put together. Let me just put this back on D because that's where I want it. However, the really cool part about this is that it will auto scan for a signal. So if we didn't know exactly what the channel is that we're using on our video transmitter, we just press and hold scan and it will start searching for an FPV video signal. Lovely idea. I think that's a super way of doing it because if you're not sure, this will find it. Just be a little bit careful because some of the FPV frequencies that are in use by Boscam, Fatshark and others are very, very close. And if you look at that diagram that I referred to in the description that talks about all of the FPV channels and maps them out, you'll notice that some of them are very close. So you may find that this will find a channel that looks like it's great, but it won't give you the best range because actually it's one that's 0 0.05 gigahertz off where it actually needs to be. So now we've done that, we need to plug that into a set of goggles. I'll plug this into um, a set that doesn't have a receiver. And then what we'll do is we'll show this working with, with the camera and transmitter that we've already looked at, but we'll also plug it into a fat shark system as well. And we'll see if it can receive the fat shark transmitter. So here it is, here's the goggles. We're actually looking out the front. This is the view from the FPV transmitter that we've already looked at. And here we have the view through the goggles looking at the Fat Shark transmitter with the Fat Shark Pilot HD camera. And you can see we have a little bit of interference. So to talk about this in summary then, we have a camera, a video transmitter, we have two simple whip aerials and we have a 32 channel receiver that work beautifully together for less than 43 pounds. Now, talking about what we've just seen, it's clear that the camera will be received beautifully by both Fat Shark and this receiver here. And the receiver itself will receive the video, but not Fat Shark very well. If we add in a circular polarized antenna with an adapter, and some other pieces, we have an amazing FPV system for less than 70 or 80 pounds.
I'd like to say a thank you again to Banggood for sending me this equipment to try. It's a lot of fun. I am definitely going to be using these cameras on more equipment. They provide fantastic value for money and are the kind of thing that I'll put on models where if it gets broken or damaged or destroyed, I won't break my heart. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.